Xbox 20, Nickelback, <laughs> and the All American Rejects for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> I have Bro. never in my life wanted to die more than this moment right now. The, why is the YouTube player falling apart? I clicked your stream, and when I clicked your stream, it started playing a Drew Doot video I watched yesterday. Oh, Jesus. But it had your title, your, like, name. Yeah, but and everything. And it is, just started yeah. playing a Drew Doot video. And then I, like, clicked on your name, and it went to your channel. And I was like, okay. So I don't know what's going on. Oh. And, like... This is like the. I mean, what's the point of the split? C9's it's about to just C9. <laughs> like, I I'm not sold on that. TL looks great. Really? Looks phenomenal right now. Now they have to beat somebody, actually, like, good. But we'll see. True. I mean, they later this week. Let me see their schedule. C9 oh, is yeah. pretty good right now. <laughs> I mean, C9 plays us tomorrow, so they have a free win. Uh, Man, yeah. your life does not get easier, bro. <laughs> no. We have Immortals on Friday. That's good. But Immortals is 2-2 two and two right now, so... My first thought, like, watching Quid, I was like, you know, like, when Jensen first came to the league, he had a tough start. Like, there was that game where he got bodied by Bjerg, but then they won anyways. Yeah, so, like... m &S also had a really rough game one i don't know if you remember like when he came in he played victor oh yeah it, it that's went, true like, it went horrendously he looked like really bad I, like that's yeah. fine but like quid isn't the problem like quid will adjust and be fine that I was think. what i was worried about <laughs> like, i was like watching it and i was like man you know they had like c9 mids have had some trouble a lot of mids have trouble when they first come but then i was like but a lot of them have way like the team around them also like looks good yeah <laughs> like i really love the ash pick by the way neither do i but like the second we locked it in i was like huh this is a 2020 throwback i remember whenever broken blade and bjergsen and uh and speak of it just carry games well double providing utility is ash and i was like you know what we can make this work i'm fine with the double lift ash pick i've seen it work before yeah. i've seen it win championships before you know what I've never seen it recover from? Being 10 CS down at level 3 and your jungler baiting your mid into many, many deaths. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have anything for that, man. Neither do I. And the word, like... I don't know. I mean, I'm expecting us to lose tomorrow. Friday is our match against the Mortals. TL plays EG. Hmm. Uh... If we lose against Immortals, I don't know where Inspired is right now, but we call him immediately. I I don't even think it's a question. I think we call you up. LCS. Way harder to bet on than LCK. I will say that right now. Or Chinese League. Chinese <laughs> League. I can not, I can actually be like, hey, this <laughs> this shitter, this complete ass player is gonna get dicked on all game long and i know it and so i can bet his under and lcs i'm like this shitter should suck and then, he just, and then nobody kills him and i'm like okay what's going on you people stink and it pisses me off do they end up winning like the team you'd expect sure but... <laughs> yeah but it's never in the way that you would think yeah it's so annoying granted that's why it's called gambling and not investing but <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's, it's annoying lcs is so hard <laughs> it's we're we have to be like the most volatile region out of anybody in the world by a wide margin like the minor regions are all like yeah. one team stomps everybody and that whoa wait a minute that's exactly what's happening right now what am i talking about well we're volatile in the sense of like dig will get kills on people you wouldn't expect yeah but it's all it all comes to a science eventually like granted it's week one so it, it's light or week two but only like fourth game in an 18 game split but but the problem like, is so rich, condensed yep so it's hard to get a read but it's still readable like i think it's fairly certain that centaur and unders are probably going to be the move 
from here on out. Like, Santorin's not very good at the game uh, anymore. He used to be. Uh, Rich is, like, one of those people you wouldn't touch because you never know, like, what he's going to do. He could yeah, end he up... could play well on his own, to, like, completely yeah. separate from Dig losing a game. Yeah, and... Yeah, like what Catman said is literally it. it's just C9 over. It's like, oh, Blabber's playing? Is Does he have a pulse? Is the team he playing against bad? More than likely, Blabber will get more than three kills. <laughs> That's all you do. At this point, <laughs> I, also think, I think you bet on JoJo as well. Yeah, my, my man JoJo's, JoJo's a pretty good one. JoJo, as of right now, is my front runner for MVP. My dude is playing JoJo's lights playing crazy. out. And... Like, oddly enough, our Mayo is becoming, like, a dog. Like a, We said this last week. He's always been a dog. It's just a matter of whether he's injured. Yeah, that's true. Like, that, if, like he can, if he can maintain his form all year, he's fine. But, like, the thing that I worry about with him, as you worry about all the time, is just, like, if his wrist starts acting up, like, yeah. shield, shielded needs to be, like, ready to go immediately. Mm -hmm. Because you know that there's a risk of that. Yeah, and it's like, I don't even know what they would do, because right now they look clean. Like, honestly, they look pretty good. Yeah. Like, EG's nice. Are they, like, they're, they could be a Dark Horse, like, Worlds, like, top four team we didn't see coming. Yep. Like, TL coming alive isn't, like, while it's shocking, it's not the most, like, I them going to Worlds would not be a surprise. They spent yep. a lot of money. Your boy picked EG to go to Worlds, so let me just add. Oh, you did? Yeah. My top oh, four to go well. were EG, uh, 100 Thieves, Cloud9, FlyQuest. Obviously, FlyQuest is just shitting the bed right now, and I don't think anybody saw that coming. Like, there's no. no way anybody could convince me that you legitimately thought FlyQuest is going to be a bottom-tier team in the LCS right now. Yeah, Nobody no. would have They'll that. figure it out. I hope, but we'll see. Maybe I not. feel like, I mean, do is this still eight teams get to playoffs? Yeah, it's still eight teams. Yeah, so they'll, they're, they'll be out. fine. And their their remaining games this week. Oh god, uh, they play EG tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> so that's tough. Probably zero and five, <laughs> and then afterwards they play Dig. So like Friday is like the game that you're <laughs> eyeing as a FlyQuest fan. That like, you you should beat Dig, assuming you beat Dig. <laughs> then fine you have time to recover you've bought your you know you've given people some faith if they start mm -hmm. 06 if they lose the dignitas panic button that to me though is still insane like the fact that you have to say hey we're we're like looking at game six as our bounce back game as fly quest i don't like just like what you said i don't think there's anybody who is sitting there going yeah game six is gonna be FlyQuest bounce back game <laughs> like them looking to get a win a win <laughs> yep they gotta be the scariest eighth seed we've ever oh, had ever ever <laughs> by a like, wide margin like that yeah. like FlyQuest is gonna be one of those teams that like you're praying to god that they actually miss playoffs because you don't yeah. want to face them that early on after you've dropped down from winner's bracket. Because that yeah. gives them two weeks to figure out their shit. Yeah. <clears throat> That's not something I want to mess with, ever. Yeah. Assuming they haven't figured it out in the next four, which is still a very big possibility. If there's a team yeah. that could, like, go 0-6 and then end the season 12-6, and six, it's them, like, right now. The the bigger question I think that we're we're gonna run into with FlyQuest is don't forget the way summer is set up is that one and two get first round buys in the in the upper bracket. Four or three through six play with double elim, seven and eight don't get double elim. At yep. what point like how many losses is too much for top six? Historically it's been nine. Like you hit nine losses, you're like you are guaranteed like to be somewhere around that mark if they if they lose to dig and they go into week 306 i would definitely say like oh they're gonna be a seventh or eighth like top six is over yeah because right now like the teams we thought were gonna be mid are like 
I'm kind of surprised TSM doesn't look like a lifeless corpse. Like, they kind of look like they can play League of Legends in some respect, not saying they're good. And yeah. Immortals doesn't look lifeless either. No. So, like, both of them definitely could get enough wins to hold them to hold six. With, since FlyQuest and 100 Thieves are dropping off right now. Now, the thing is, 100 Thieves very easily is also going to set that bar at six. Like, they're... And it just sucks, because it shouldn't take that many wins. But the fact that FlyQuest isn't winning anything is what's just throwing me off. That's the thing. Like, like, even in a world where 100 Thieves beats Immortals on Friday and FlyQuest loses to Dig, you have a two-game gap between, ever, between FlyQuest and the teams above them. 100 Thieves, like sure we're starting off bad but like we're we'd be two and six or we'd be two and four at that point which is not could be worse because then our following week we've gotten most of our hard opponents out of the way after that like next week's games for 100 thieves are dignitas golden guardians and tsm so like yep. we have a we have a bounce back week next week that like the biggest thing for me is just ending the week on a positive getting the chance yep. getting that win over immortals and then going into the the following week with the chance to pull ourselves back to a positive record. Like, that's the only thing that, like, in my mind is giving me some sort of level of, like, calm and serenity. If you're a FlyQuest, you've got tough teams ahead. Yeah, like, right now for Fly, nobody's an easy win. And the thing is, no matter how much better they get, like, the top six teams really don't look too bad. Like, for LCS, I mean, they're pretty nice. You have, like... The only three that I think are, like, guaranteed losses for everybody below them right now are EG, TL, and, and C9. The three sure. of them look on a clear, separate playing field relative to everybody else. That's very true. And, like, the tough part for FlyQuest is that if NRG figures it out in any way, which is a very real possibility, like we said before the season started, they're streaky. They could yeah. figure it out. That's another tough, tough area to be in. Like, low-key looking at the standings, it just doesn't look good, man. What's Like, they got to put something but together. I feel like this happens at least once a year, where standings just look weird. Yeah, weird. And, like, things are off. Like, I, I hate to be the one to say this, and Nick can't sit here and cope on this otherwise, but... The year that Cloud9 did the absolute best at Worlds, I believe they started 1-3 and three or 0-4. Oh 2018 summer, C9 started off abysmal. Hmm. I remember celebrating their uh, their their early on losses simply because uh, one of them was to Optic, and like we made sure they were put down on the ground. So teams can absolutely recover. Yeah. The difference between this and that situation, though, is that there was a clear, like, this is the problem, and we have the tools to fix it. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I can't honestly say that all the tools are there to fix the problems on FlyQuest. Yeah, and... <sighs> Also, the thing is the time. Time being as short as it is, there's not a, as much time as there would be in a regular split to figure out those issues. And they also don't have, like you said, they do not have the resources. There are no players to bring in. There is no subs to make, really, for FlyQuest. No. They have a pretty, a pretty like loaded roster. I wouldn't say there's a lot of like, oh, we can we can drop this or drop him. Like, there is no dropping Vulcan, Spica, Impact, maybe Vikla you could drop, but you'd have to get a better import. There's no NA mid I would grab. And uh, I mean, I would throw the bag at TSM. For who? Insanity. Oh, well, I think we'll start him over Ruby. I, I mean, I hope so. Dude looks incredible. He does. The Graves game today, like how he survived that fight around Dragon, 
like dancing yeah. around his grave. I just sat there and was like, at the end of it, he's cleaning up with the triples. Like, how the fuck did he live? <laughs> he was like two health sitting in the tribe or sitting in the bush in bot lane, like trying to not die. And then he flashes in, get a, gets a collector kill, and then all of a sudden he's fine. Like, what the fuck happened here? I, for one, think that we should, in the famous words of a former probably going to be arrested president stop the count here and send you some to worlds <laughs> if there was any time to stop the count this would be it yeah. <laughs> for you at least yeah yeah <laughs> like we <laughs> i i loved what one of the comments said in the tsm subreddit it said <laughs> Imagine if insanity comes in and carries us to worlds, and it would just be like, he said the best like title for it would be subs in, just keeps carrying and never allows the actual guy to come in, goes to worlds, refuses to elaborate and leaves. <laughs> 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 like that would be the greatest timeline. <laughs> oh, it absolutely would be. I don't think it's gonna happen though. Like when I'm looking at TSM, I like I'm looking at that bot lane of yeah. wild, wild turtles. I think I honestly think if you put insanity on on FlyQuest, they might be a different team. Yeah, he's looking honestly really good, and it makes no sense. Like, I think though what what's helping him is that it's odd to say this because we technically have washed veterans, but like. They, a lot of people said that his biggest issues were that he has no idea like what to do after laning phase. And that's kind of solved if you put him on a team with Wild Turtle and Hanser. They're like pretty smart at the game, or at least they've known how to win LCS multiple times, so they know what they're doing in some way. Yeah, I, so, no, I would agree with that. Like you take his, his ability to do... Like last week, uh, when he TP'd in with Hanser... And they ended the game on that backdoor-ish, whatever you want to call it. Like, he said, uh, Kev he was like, Kevin just said to TP in. So I just TP'd in because he was screaming it. And then he TP'd in and we ended the game. And he was like, I wasn't really thinking anything. I was like, bro, you are exactly what I want in the mid laner. <laughs> like, <laughs> somebody just told me to do it, so I did it. <laughs> That's <laughs> like... great. That is phenomenal. But I mean, hey, look, it... You can win with quote unquote brainless players. No, you 100% can. You just have to build and a team around them. Like, it's that simple. I and say we look great. You cut out a or, little bit. Oh, my bad. They, like, we don't look great. We're not going to be a top team. We're definitely in this little area of what Immortals, Dig, and us yeah. should be the bottom uh, three. I mean, you should be, but you're not. The the truth of the matter oh, yeah, is you're, you're tied with Golden Guardians and Immortals right now for top four. I would currently put your your form over Golden Guardians. Uh, Golden Guardians hasn't impressed me yet. And Immortals, I think, are benefiting from relatively weaker teams so far. Yeah, we just beat them, so... Exactly. So they're down to two and two. And lost to you guys. They should have lost to NRG, and they did lose to uh, Team Liquid. So, I mean, I think they're solidly there for you guys. Like, I, I think TSM is what they've been ever since they've been uh, average. And that is, we always seem to be a good gate guard team. Wait a minute. Like, you guys are even better than a gate guard team right now. Yeah, we are. I just mean, like, in the past, we've been this team that we're definitely not going to win. Yeah, like, fair. there's no expectation for us to win. But if you're not beating us, then you're probably not, like, going to win either type deal. <laughs> yeah, true. Because, because the only, you're 2-2 two and two right now, and the two teams that you lost to were Team Liquid and Cloud9. C9, yeah. That's pretty good. And I, I mean, tomorrow I think will be a really good test for that. You play NRG. Yeah. And NRG hasn't looked great. If you can beat NRG, it is, then. It is weird, though, like, feeling like there's hope for us to go to Worlds. 
I didn't expect seed. to have yeah. this. Yeah, like, I didn't expect to be like, oh man, maybe we could be a fourth seed. It like, be... I expected to come into this and just lose bad. It would be so on brand for TSM to get the 4C, go to World Space Europe, shit the bed, and then just dip out entirely and say, you can't win oh, in yeah. North America. You just can't do it. <laughs> One guy put, like, that was another, quote, same exact comment, like, style. All it said was, announce leaving the LCS, go to Worlds, refuse to elaborate. That would be our last split. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, then, my bad, I missed one. One of the points was, like, still leave the LCS after going to yep. Worlds. <laughs> I mean... Like, it... I will say, like, I didn't expect to be competitive. I mean, it's very clear, though, who's the best teams right now. Yeah. Like, TL and C9 look like they're going to be doing nasty business to people in playoffs. But it, it does make it fun, though, if you're a fan of, like, the lower team the lower teams like you and I both are right now. Whenever yeah. it is kind of a mess below the top three. Like, that, sure, you want your top three to be solid. Like, I think that's a good thing for the region. Like, having Cloud9, yeah. TL, and EG be, like, the de facto top three is good. If EG can get their shit together, maybe they make a run. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it is Cloud9 and TL, and that builds up hype over the course of the split as they build towards playing each other. But then for the rest of us, it's like, okay, you know, it's the watching the monkeys fight in the pit, but you know what? It's entertaining. And yeah. that's all that matters. And we're fighting for a big deal. We're exactly. fighting for a free extra couple of weeks of league yep. and a month of hype. <laughs> a month of hype to beat Europe in one series, and that's yep. it. And not do anything else, and that's worth it. And Brian made a good point. He said GGS started 0-4 last split, so... That's true. Well, GGS started 0-4, but then also changed their mid laner. So it's another one of those examples with like Cloud9 as well, where <laughs> you make that change, and it drives you to get better. Currently, there are no changes to be made within LCS rosters at all. So I don't know no. what you... With the exception of 100 Thieves. And 100 Thieves, hey, we lost our first game with Quid. Golden Guardians also notably lost their first game with Gory. So, like, that can rebound. So, like, I'm I'm 100% hoping that, like, 100 Thieves can rebound and that will ultimately be fine because of that change in mid lane. But, like, the difference is you knew with River and Golden Guardians that you just need to put a team around River and you were fine. Yep. I'm not looking at Closer being like, you need to put a good mid laner and top laner around Closer and he'll be fine. No. He's got tools around him. It's now just on <laughs> him to actually play the game well. And DL is looking fine too, so... I don't really know what you said. Like, Yeah. It's just not looking pretty. I don't really know what's going on. I mean, did you make a head coach change? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we brought, so we that in, uh, Kane. that could be a part of it. Hi, bitches. Hi. <laughs> Isn't Kane? Didn't Kane start off bad though, and then slowly figure it out? I'm not 100 percent certain. I know Kane was on like the TL back to back. Yeah, to back to back Dynasty. Roster, but I'm not sure. Stuff. Before, but I remember sure TL before. having like just being way better. I can't remember. I don't know. Maybe I'm revisioning history there but I don't know. They, but like i don't really know what you guys do at this point because you need you can't just go get another jungler other than inspired which you've already said and i don't even know if he wants to come back to na like how that's sitting i don't know i legitimately have no clue on what we do at this point because it just all all seems lost to a certain extent right now i don't know what to yeah do. i don't know what to do tomorrow i'm just gonna try it and enjoy for the spectacle that it will be but then beyond that like i don't know Friday's just blame beer no, i no i can't i'm not the, i'm not that guy i know some people <laughs> will i'm not that guy just blame him for you guys not having the time <sighs> do what real men do push your problems off on other people <laughs> I, I don't even know. I mean, 
Because right now, like, what's your even schedule? Like, is it pretty easy? Yeah. No, you play Cloud9. Yeah. We play Cloud9, but, that, but then afterwards, Immortals, Dig, TSM, uh, and I forget who else. Golden Guardians, yeah. And Golden Guardians. No. That's not a terrible schedule. No, that's fine. But here's my... Okay, now, I, I hate the if you lose to Immortals, it's going to hurt. I, okay, I do have to ask the question. Other than, other than uh, inspired, who else is available? Who else For could jungle? we get? Yeah. Is there anybody in Academy that's worth getting right now? I don't know. I don't watch Academy. I, I, I don't pay attention to it ever. Like, I really couldn't tell you there. I mean. In Europe and Korea, I'm sure no, there's I'm guys. Tr- I'm not trying to import. Oh, I'm you can honest. import, can you? No, because we got... Well, yeah, we can. We got Quid, oh, somebody has got his okay. green card, Doublelift and Busio, obviously, both here. Yeah. But I couldn't tell Someone you. off this guy's toast? I don't really think it's going to work. No. I don't... Here's the thing. I don't think... I don't think there's any other option other than Inspired that you would pay for. Maybe shield and you take them away from EG if they're willing to give them up. They won't give them up. Yeah. TG, they won't even. I mean, especially to you guys. You think EG is going to help you when you held tenacity from them? Uh, if they need the money bad enough, yeah. But then again, I don't Nate, think they Nate need Shaw, money. Nate Shaw tweeted out about getting a Counter Strike roster, so I don't think money is on our side here. Yeah, I don't think EG needs money I think that bad. Do. I think they do. I think they just cut that roster because they didn't think it was worth it. I mean, partially, yeah, but they also were bleeding sponsors. So, I mean, maybe they fixed that problem, but I haven't seen anything from them to say that they have. And I don't see you guys spending for Shield. No. I don't think no. for an Academy Unproven. No, I don't think we, I don't think we spend anything there. I am curious to see what we do in the off season, though. Like, what what do Double we do? Double is probably gonna leave. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I think that yeah, that's probably a likely. A like, I mean, I, I don't want to jump ahead and start discussing off season <laughs> shit now. Yeah, but let, let's save that. That time will come. That's true too. Con made a good point. Viewership is not at a spot where. He... I think Nate Shot would spend that money. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he, that's right. Which, yeah. Speaking of that, uh, did you see the video I put out today? No. What was it about? Call of Duty League is bigger than the LCS. Like, sustainably? Viewership. They are now more watched than the LCS is. We are no longer the biggest uh, league in North America. Now, granted, Valorant obviously is beating us, but like. I'm going to discount Valorant because of their year one thing. Like, they're just it. Like, I'm just going to exclude them for now because obviously they're the new shiny toy and they're obviously going to be the biggest game in the world. But, like, the fact that we are now smaller than the Call of Duty League in terms of viewership is astounding. And, it, like, it's not even close either. It's a sign. It's a sign that we need to try something different, probably. Although they have been. That's the broadcast. thing. Broadcast. The broadcast has been trying shit. Like I think Americans like tournaments more. I think EU system might draw us in more. Maybe, but even then, like here's the stat that blew my mind. Do you know how many day or how many total how many total hours of LAN events that Call of Duty has versus uh league of legends no okay so you didn't see my tweet on it i saw your tweet i can't remember but i remember it being like substantially larger the lcs plays 20 hours in front of fans outside of la like excluding the lcs arena because obviously that's like 50 people at this point in the stands like 50 to 100 people most of which are staff on teams or you know stuff Mm -hmm. like that like actually going out uh going out to theaters, arenas, stuff like that. The LCS does 20 hours of that 
the Call of Duty League does 150 hours per year, excluding Call of Duty Champs, which is an additional 30 on top of that. So 180 hours relative to 20. Aren't they also doing like localized team names? Yep. The New York to America Sublime. or to yeah. Well, there was the London Royal Ravens, but they just they just sold and are uh, selling to Charlotte. So now all of the teams are going to be from. Uh, North America. Okay, that makes way more sense than what Overwatch was doing. Yeah. I am out. Like, if you're going to be a league that wants to do names, you should at least do it in the country you're playing in. Which, to be fair, they did. They had different divisions, and they thought, oh, we're just going to have, like, True. The, the basically, they're going to try and do the best of both worlds with League of Legends and what Call of Duty does. But Call yeah. of Duty was just smart and was like, yeah, we're just having one global league with city names. And you know what? It's working decently well, I would say. Yeah, because one crazy thing, if you go to, like, Loli Sports scheduling, right? And you just read their schedule down for LPL, like, because I've been watching it a lot. And I know I yeah. compare us to them a lot, which is unfair because they're so big. But they're... Like, you can read down their list, and I find it really cool. Their teams have, have, like, city names before them. Yeah. Like, that part, I just was like, oh, that's kind of, like, uniquely cool. I'm sure they've been doing it for a while, and I just don't know because I never watched. But, like, even here, only two of, like, stadiums or whatever you want to call it. And it's kind of cool to watch, like, how localized they can be. Now the way forward it really forward. is like if lcs did it it would be sick i know they have been very like anti-localization anti-anything outside of la you know yeah so it's not gonna change but i really do think them not putting those roots in early hurt is gonna be what hurt them in the long run like because they're gonna have to do it eventually yeah. There's going to be a place in time where it is most beneficial for you to draw the interest of a full city. Yep. Like, but, see, especially in America, where there's so many ties to your geolocation. So yeah. many. Like, it's, oh, ing yeah. it's ingrained in our culture heavily. And you need to be able to play into that, at least in my mind, to be able to just have any sort of semblance of long-term fan growth because like the reason why I think it it's good for Call of Duty specifically is you're combating what's known as the optic problem. If you look at the viewership of every single Call of Duty tournament, the most watched matches that are not finals are literally all of the optic games because it's <laughs> all optic fans. Optic gaming just carries Call of Duty bar none now the difference is you're not at risk of losing optic and call of duty like you are losing tsm and league of legends and yeah the city model works incredibly well because it, if you're just trying to fight against optic online you're never going to be able to beat them they put out better content no. they do more they are just naturally going to pull people in from the online audience yep the best way to fight against that, give people something besides just online to fight it. And I think yep. the same thing goes for the LCS in a different but slightly similar way. We're not growing fans online anymore, or at least not of like League of Legends and of the teams. Like it's just not happening. So the only way that you can combat that is to give people a reason to cheer for them that's beyond the game. Yep. And. It also, like, if you have an event in a certain city, it gives a lot of people there a reason to cheer for the local team if they're new. Like, you can show up to Charlotte. And imagine if we would have shown up to Charlotte and we had, or not Charlotte, we went to, where was it, Raleigh, right? Yeah. LCS finals. But there was a Charlotte team. So people felt like there was a reason, oh, this team that might have made it or whatever had... I can cheer for them because that's exciting. But we don't go until finals weekend, so the odds of that team making it are so low and it's so random. You don't really know if it's going to hit or not. Yep. So it's like, just makes it tough. 
And on top of that, like to Jeffrey's point, he said, do I think the age of geolocation has disappeared in recent years due to the rise of globalism? Partially yes, partially no. Like that's why I think localization is important is because yes, you are going to have the the rise in like being online everywhere all at once. But the problem is in that model, what tends to happen is one or two teams take over and dominate yep. that model and capture all the attention. So then you yep. need the other side of it to balance out. That's not saying that everybody needs to focus on geolocation. They don't. I mean, it would be in their best interest to, as long as you're not like that team, like Cloud9, for example, I don't think should geolocate. I think they're the team that at this point is like big enough to the point where they can just remain online and probably build fans. And even then, I still think that Jack would try and do it. But you need some people to do it. You don't need everybody. You need some people to. In the same way that you don't need everybody doing the online everywhere all at once model, like that's not going to all work together. It. Uh, I hope that makes sense. But like you need the best of both worlds. Yes, and uh, I think for teams like RNG and EG are in two separate cities. Yeah, like you want teams don't have to even be in separate cities. There are a lot of teams in LPL that have their setups in the same city, like shanghai or whatever but it's not it's not really about separating city that's a big deal it's giving people a base especially for your new fans letting them know where they can go to go watch a game or something and lcs isn't anywhere near being able to do that and they haven't even been trying to or investing in it and i think at this point they're just going to keep saying, ah, oh, there's no point in geolocating, it's too expensive, but they never tried. And now the only time they're going to be able to try is when they're at the bottom. And by then, it's almost too late. I mean, you might be able to build it yeah. from the ground up, but you've passed your time yeah. so heavily. Like, they imagine how much easier. This is one thing I've been thinking about when trying to find a new team, since my team will obviously be leaving. Imagine how easy it would have been to grab me if any team was Chicago based. Yeah. Paul, oh, they would have had you in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would have said that's my Midwest team right there. I'm good. And I wouldn't have even had a problem waiting for uh what is it? A team that comes to Indiana and switching over to them and being like that's my Indiana team or they more represent the Midwest in some way cuz Chicago doesn't really represent us all yeah chicago's not chicago still is like like we that, all look at chicago as uppy city boys like that's just life <laughs> yeah and to, they think to, they're better than us to jeffrey <laughs> jeffrey's point of like oh the teams that aren't in like the big are that like aren't in the big cities aren't they weaker in terms of popularity yeah because there's less people but the point is you're still giving representation to that smaller amount of people that's like saying like oh just because you're not in new york does that mean that like teams shouldn't or like cities shouldn't get teams well no nobody's like new york that doesn't mean you don't do it just because not everybody's up to that standard you still keep going you still do it elsewhere and do it otherwise like that's you, yeah it's it's showing everybody that they matter and right now in the current esports model i don't believe that we're doing an effective job of showing everybody that they matter like no i keep going back to the point and uh I mean, some of the guys in New York obviously know this better than others, but like being able to engage in person for these events, it's just better. It yeah. feels so much better to watch LCS with other people chilling, hanging out and like having a good time. Now, imagine if you had a team that you could bond over as well. Like the problem that I yeah. that you have right now at the bar is like everybody comes in like, oh, we're all fans of different teams. And like, while it's still a good experience, it's not the same as if you show up to an event and everybody's pulling for the same team and like can talk about like how our players are doing. Like you start theory crafting and shit for like your team. Like the only theory crafting you can do it right now within like general LCS stuff is like big macro industry wide shit like we're doing right now. If Paul and I were both TSM fans or both 100 Thieves fans, like, it'd be a lot easier for us to talk about, like, individual roster moves that we think would be great, the co the plus or mm -hmm. minuses of them, like, playstyle changes, stuff like that. But, like, you need that, but you also need this as well. I, I don't know. Yeah, and, it like, it's even harder because if we were geolocated, it would be funny as well to be able to be, like, 
Oh yeah, of course you guys are gonna think you can make that move because of where you're from. Little digs at where you're from, like being like, yeah, the Knicks think they can get anybody because they're the Knicks. But are they gonna get anybody? No, they're a bunch of bums. And I can say that all the time as a Pacers fan because I hate the Knicks and I was raised to hate the Knicks. But my Nick fans hate us too, for the most part of what I understand, because a lot of them I meet hate the Pacers. <laughs> and they, but we can make those digs at each other because of where we're from. But with LCS, that missing component kind of sucks. Because at that point, the only thing in LCS you can make digs at each other for is like winning, and that's it. Yeah. Like it's just about how much you win. Like, and the NBA just showed like having small market teams winning is really good for them. Like. The past couple of years with the Bucks and the Nuggets winning, uh, viewership really hasn't been terrible. This year, viewership was up from the past few years, and it was quote unquote small market teams. But Miami's not really a small market. I don't know why they call them that, but they call them small market teams, and that's good for the league because it gives other small market teams like Indiana, what Charlotte, uh. I don't know who else Memphis in some ways yeah. it gives them hope that we'll get there we'll get our guy and it keeps you watching keeps you going to games yep but you can't have that in the LCS because the LCS is one there's no salary cap literally any team can just spend out of their mind to try to win there's no draft so there's no time to really watch does Call of Duty have a draft uh no but there's a lot more fluidity like if a player is okay. doing if a player's doing bad, there's a very robust amateur system underneath them that you can pull from. Makes sense. And... But, there, but again, there's also only one league. <laughs> Call of Duty's a massive game. There's only one league, so you're not splitting it up, which is like a little bit different. Yeah. And there's just no I don't know, there's none of that pull here today. And then we also don't really come together as well. Yeah. As other regions seem to come together. It seems like EU teams can pull it together a little better. Yeah. As far as syncing up. I don't know. We kind of all hate each other, which is the American way. I mean, yeah. that's literally just how it is. Like, I the only sport I know of that we actually come together for is soccer. And that's because there's a forced big national team. Other than that, you just have, like, everybody hates whoever's winning. <laughs> Did you see uh, from the from Call of Duty Championships this past week the fan that was on a leash? No. I got to show you. This is one of the most hysterical things I've ever seen. This is why Call of Duty fandom is better than anybody else. So one, <laughs> of, the, one of the players' names on... The team that would go on to win Call of Duty Champs is called, uh, his name's Kismet. His nickname is the Bulldog. So, their friends made a leash, put him on it, and had him <laughs> act like a bulldog all day. Just going around, like, oh barking like a bulldog in the front row, like, going nuts anytime that they were they were out there. And, like, went That's ballistic. <laughs> but, like, you don't have that level of fandom. Like, you don't have that dedication in North America to a certain you just don't have the fans that are willing to go like balls to the wall and stuff like that. Well not right now for League. No. Like it's kinda just like well, you used to have it. It was it would get pretty crazy. Like I felt like a lot of the tourneys. But yeah. I think once they moved to like COVID kinda hit it too. Like COVID was kind of a problem. It did, but Call of Duty bounced back after COVID. League just didn't. Yeah, we didn't. I think we didn't put enough effort in going out places. Like, I think you could have done mid Super Week. Super Weeks in random spots might have not been a bad idea. I don't know. Yep. But something has to happen, like, travel wise. I know Europe doesn't really travel as much, but I think people forget Europe is way smaller than us. Oh, way, way smaller. Yeah. And way easier to travel. Like,. You can take a train ride in Europe to Berlin, more than likely. I don't know that for a fact, but the way Europe talks on Reddit, they make it sound like everything's better than America. So I would assume you could. <laughs> and, they, and in America, like, putting it in 
uh, LA is like, okay, so basically anybody from Oklahoma over just can't make it nope. feasibly. <laughs> yeah, and just will not. And there's no chance. Like, if I'm going to go to LA, I'm probably going to go to Anaheim to see Disneyland before I'm going to go to LCS. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's just life if I'm paying 400 bucks for a plane ticket one way. Like, I'm going if that and that's buying it on cheat days like and like I'm the thing to go over there the thing for call of duty is like i know each and every year there's probably going to be an event within like mm -hmm. reasonable driving distance of me yeah like i like I, granted there was no new york major this year because the the something happened with the event but i could have been up in boston if i wanted to could have been yeah. there in, in reasonable amount of time uh if they had an event down in charlotte I could be I could be in Charlotte in probably ten hours driving, which isn't bad. I mean that's a lot, but like even like that, they're, they'll go to DC at some point. They'll go to Philly at some point. Like you're gonna have like at least one stop a year that you can guarantee that you're going to, and that makes a massive difference. Yeah, and that's not just I mean, like, that's to be clear. Point. There's also not one day either. It's like a three day long weekend. That's just like this massive thing. I don't know. Yeah, I was wrong. It would be pretty bad driving from Madrid to Berlin. Really? How, how Looking much? Looking at it, 23 hours. How much by high-speed train? Because I know high-speed train is like their, their go-to. Oh, is it? Yeah. They don't have a train option on here for me, it looks like. Uh, okay. Unless this is a train, it looks like a bus. How much would the flight be? Because I heard flights like within Europe are not bad. Oh. I can click that button. Three hour flight from one hundred and eighty one dollars. Yeah, that's really not bad at all. No, one hundred and eighty one so, is cheap. Yeah. So like that that kind of system might be a little better than what we got going on, but I thought it was a little more. Uh, are they in Berlin, right? Yeah. Like, OK, then, yeah, that. They could probably put it in Munich. It would be a little more centralized. But yeah, I don't I, I've heard some of the LEC people complaining about the fact that it's in Berlin. They're like, you really picked the like, you picked this area whenever you could have done something so much better. But yeah, but still, like, I don't know. I don't really know how all this functions, but it seems a lot easier than what we got going on. It makes no sense why we have LCS as far away as possible. Like, yeah. in tucked in the middle of nowhere. Like, what? That is just, it's a really silly system. I mean, and you got to think that hurts a lot with team building. And right now, LEC is even beating us on that. They're killing us in the sense of, like, the way they have their teams being localized. It's yeah. insane. The, the other thing I was going to... I, I actually forget what I was going to go with that. I was just going to say something along the lines of somebody asked me today if I would like cover more Call of Duty and content and stuff like that. And it's like, bro, I wish. I, mm -hmm. I wish I could fall in love with Call of Duty like that all over again, but I just can't. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Indiana is 30 hours from L.A. Jesus Christ. So, granted, that's only six more hours than a drive for, like, a EU person, and they'd have to cross multiple borders. But that's just, what are we doing here? In a country that is this easy to travel in, why is it harder than other places? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> it shouldn't be this difficult. <laughs> Anyways, let's get off the negative topic train. Fair enough. I want to move to something positive, which is, did you see the Nefiri stuff that came out? That was a really good cinematic. I Honestly, Probably this, just... this might be the most excited I've been for a champion in a long time. That I'm not even What position play. is it going to be? Jungle. It's a jungle assassin. Mm. Or mid lane assassin, I think. Maybe mid lane. I don't know. It's an assassin nevertheless. Every champ's a jungle for a day, anyways. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't 
don't know. I, I just love Dark and Champions. Also, the memes that are going to come from this champion literally being a dog like the, are going to be the best thing since Gnosis. And I can't wait. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to end up probably spamming this champ because I always end up playing Dark and Champs. Do you? I know Kane's a Dark and Champ. Um, who else do you yeah. play that's Dark and I really like Kane. Well, I guess I don't play on my friend does. Ben uh, plays a ton of Aatrox. True. Yeah. I play. Vars. I don't know. They're just fun. Yep. <laughs> they're just fun. Like Dark and Champs end up being addicting. Yep. Who else is a is a Dark and Champ? I'm trying to. There's there's more than that. Why am I not remembering? Was it leaked? What? Where's the thing at? The video. What of his gameplay? No, of the cinematic. I watched it earlier. Yeah, it's the it's on the front page of Reddit. It's on their main YouTube channel as well. Bro, I searched it and I can't find it at all. N A A F I R I. N A A. Bro, YouTube search is really dropping the ball on this one. I literally just searched it earlier and it was the first thing that came up. I think it might be a U problem. I mean, I spelled it wrong, but still, like, I got six different ability preview videos and a, a Panther Dragon video on it before I got the cinematic. I had to scroll six videos down. That's Jesus. wild. Jesus. What are they doing? Maybe it's just my feed, because I've already watched it. That could be it. Yeah. I've already seen it, so maybe they're oh, just, Oh, yeah, like... that's why. If he, like, if you've already watched the video, it, fil it puts it further down. Oh, okay. Uh, Jeffrey Bro, it's asks, so good. would I pay five dollars to watch the CDL and in, in 1080p if it was paywalled? Absolutely. Yeah, not a doubt in my mind. I would. Yeah. I mean, For... paywall is fine. Look, me and me and Paul are pretty set on that. That we're fine with paywalls. We're used to if it you... sports. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are people going to illegally stream it? Fine. Yes. But that's life. You got to find a way to make money off the league somehow. Like, I pay for football videos all the time. This will be the first year I, well, this will be the first year I have a shot at paying for it easily now because it's on YouTube TV, but I can't even buy it because I can't really, I can't buy it. If I buy the NFL Sunday ticket and then tell my wife, hey, I know I left you for a year, but I'd like to spend every Sunday just watching football. I'm probably not going to yeah. have her much longer. So I don't think I'll be watching anything but Colts games this year, which she said is cool. She said when I come home, I can watch the Colts. There you go. And I was in Sunday night football and Thursday night and Monday night. She gave me four games a week. That's pretty good. You're just not going to be the degenerate that spends your entire day Sunday and then... Like I usually am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am that guy in those videos who they show just sitting down at 1 p.m. and going... <sighs> until 11 and then going, dang, it's over. <laughs> the <laughs> day is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Literally man. would just sit down from 1 p.m. Till Sunday night football started, I would just watch football, run in between the the uh, evening game and the Sunday night game, and then I would finish my run, shower, and watch Sunday night football. <laughs> I, weirdly enough, don't have anything that I can do that with. Really? Like not, not even League, I can't do that. You can't just sit there all day and watch it? No. I don't blame you. Can't. I can't do that with anything. Like, I get too antsy. I want to go out do something. I'll, by all means, like, I'll still walk around and listen to it. But, like, I mm -hmm. can't sit still on the couch for that long. It bugs the shit out of me. I need, like, something to be, like, I don't know, some, something to be going on. It's, like, even a Saturday where, like, I have nothing going on here. And it's, like, oh, I'm going to sit, sit at home and play a full day of video games. I can't. I can't convince well, you're myself like that that's worth it. Your city life, so you like to party and stuff. It, it, no, Way it more like, than me. It was like that back when I was in the suburbs, though. Like back when I was in North Carolina oh, really? as well. Like it was like, 
I'd have a full day to play video games, and then, like, by the end of it, I'd feel it, like if I didn't go out and do at least something, I would feel like such shit the entire, like, from 10 o'clock on. I just yeah. be setting OBS saying that's disconnected. Okay, OBS disconnected and reconnected properly, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's like, why am I wasting so much time on this whenever I could be doing other things and still technically enjoying that without problem? Yeah. I feel you on that. I mean, I kind of have that same mindset. I just... I don't know. Football and basketball are my itch, though. Like, hey, I can watch... Why do you have it? Yeah, I can watch March Madness from the beginning to the end of the night. But I also do it with, like, friends. See, that's fair. I, I don't have anything like that that I've ever watched, like, with friends in that manner. Because it's me and my dad from, like, game one to the end. Uh, of the day like for basketball and then for football it's me and my uh my buddy i go to his house and we just watch it until it's over you're good to walk by but no oh, never mind no i was just covering the camera let me know when you need to walk by but so yeah i got like 10 more minutes uh, anything else you want to talk about before I go to Khan's subtake? No, sir. You got nothing. Nothing at all. Come on. You haven't For played league? any. You haven't played anything. Oh, I haven't played league. No. Neither have I. I said I was going to yesterday, and I didn't end up playing any games. Yeah, I spent been... the entire day editing. Really, just looking at charts a lot lately <laughs> and watching lpl i mean lpl is just lpl i don't want to bore people here talking about it too much they're just better they're playing out of their minds right now i'm a, like it's good league they lng played blg yesterday and that was a good game who won blg won both nice bro there was a fight at the end like if you can watch highlights or watch the ending to game two of that BLG game, it's worth your time because, like, Bin is, it's like a 3-1, right? It's him versus Gala, um, their jungler, and their support on LNG, and he kills them all coming out of GA. Damn. <laughs> like, GA procs, they, it's just him and all of them left alive, kills them all, and then ends the game because it was in their Nexus area. Like, between Inhib and Nexus. And I didn't think it would happen. Nobody did. And I'm just sitting there, and it's like, no way! <laughs> like, <laughs> announcers freaking out. Everybody freaking out. <laughs> Dang. It was insane. I mean, JDG still looks like the best team in the world. Like... So no fall-off in sight for them? Oh, yeah. no. No, they've, they've been playing more, like... Their games have been sporadic. But then any they play a good... They just try to crush their souls. Wow. Like, if it's a bad team, it could go 2-1. If it's a good team, they try to 2-0 them with, as quickly as possible and make them feel it. So and it's they, like every lane. So they might be the ones then to finally pull off the Grand Slam. I mean, yeah. Nobody's like, ever done that before, right? Like, there's no way that's ever won both of their domestic sp splits, MSI and Worlds, all in the same year. I don't think so. I really don't think so. Like, I mean, granted, they have a lot. They have a lot to get through. Like, BLG still looks really good. Their only loss is to JDG, so like, that's kind of respectable. Top looks really good. Like, you could be seeing Top Esports again. And Team We hasn't lost a game. And I haven't been able to figure it out. I've been trying to read it everywhere. They've only played four series, and I don't know why. But they haven't lost a series, and in those series, haven't lost a game. They're 8-0 right now. Like, Team Wii looks insane. Huh. So, Team Wii's really good, too. It's been it's been good league, man. It's been a good time to watch LPL. Like, the bad teams are still the bad teams, and... The good teams are playing out of their freaking mind. And that's what that's what I enjoy about it. 
like tonight Team Lee plays OMG and it's probably going to be a bloodbath because OMG is very up or down. All right, you're good. But I don't know. LPL's just been fun again. It's been a good time. Okay, so uh, Jeffrey just noted that T1 did technically complete the Grand Slam by doing the wraparound model. So T1 2015 uh, won, won Summer and Worlds and then won 2016 Spring and MSI, which is like the Tiger count. Slam. But that does not count as all in the same year. That would yeah. not qualify you as like the most dominant roster ever of all time. And it's not a Grand Slam. It's just not. The Grand yeah. Slam is you start the year and end the year. Top dog. Like, that's a Grand Slam. You know what I mean? Yep. JDG might do it. They might be the ones. Which, yeah. Speaking of the Grand Slam, that goes in the cons taken. This will be the final thing we cover for tonight. Uh, he asked, should the LOL Esports calendar adjust to where its longest off season is in the summer months? So you start the season in September have MSI around New Year's, and then do Worlds in April, May, with June through August off. I would say yes. <laughs> but what is he saying me, again? Is it better for the league? Should, should we adjust it? Should we adjust to do that? Uh... I mean, I like it, but the problem that you are going to run into is that scheduling scheduling world... Well, no, because I guess everybody else is in season in October, so it doesn't really make a difference now that I think about it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to... I think it's not a terrible idea, but you'll also be competing with every other league during the biggest time of the year. I mean, to be like... fair, our best viewership, though, is when we are competing with people. Yeah, that's our, true. Our, our peak viewerships are the beginning of the year in spring and the end of the year with Worlds, which is in October, whenever literally everything is back. Yeah, but I would rather... But I'm going to pick League over Week 1 of NFL football. You know what I mean? Like Worlds over Week 1 of yeah, something like a, that. Assuming that Worlds is in, is in uh, April or May, assuming May... Like, the only thing that you're yeah. competing against is the NBA Finals. And NHL yeah. Finals. Which don't even play then. If it was April, May, it'd be fine. Yeah. that's. What, I think if you're wrapping up in May, I think that's more than fine. I think you're good. Yeah, I don't see how it could be a problem. I think it would help. It'd probably be a good change. I don't know how they would do it or when they would do it. You'd almost uh... have to take a whole year off. How would you implement that? Because Worlds would wrap know. up in October. I mean, I guess what you could do... I mean, the year if you were going to do that was going to be, like, the Asia Games this year. Yeah. Where, like, you bump up and you, like... Or... I guess if the Asia... I don't know. When's the Asia Games again? Is that every year or is that like every four years? No, I think it's every four years, yeah. Damn. Okay, because what I was going to say is... And the thing is, even if we're moving to three tournaments, that's fine. You still have one every quarter. If you're starting in October, you have October, November, December. You have a December tournament that ends like right before Christmas. So you have two months of regular season for... Or maybe for, two. What? Uh, reading the Asia Games comment. Oh, is that every two? I don't know. No, oh, he said never mind. Uh, but no, I'm trying to. You just you leverage Asia Games, which are going to happen in August, and you like bump the timeline up of everything, and say like, hey, like we're going to cram everything in before Asia Games, and then we're just going to start the fall, the next year, at that same time. And then I think what yeah. you also do to coincide with that, because we also go into preseason. In November, don't forget. So I'm trying to think. You're adjusting the league calendar to go with that then. And like the new season starts in January. But maybe it would be a good thing to start the new season in October. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about it and it makes sense. Ah. <sighs> 
But, like, if you do three tournaments, that's also perfectly fine. So, say you do whatever, like, say the third tournament is, like, a country, like, a World Cup type thing. You you do October, November for MSI, December MSI, or you use that first split as, like, the World Cup one, whatever you want to do. Uh, you have a small break, January, February, March, or January, like, January, for how, the shorter time period there than you do the second tournament. And then you have April, May, June for, and like the last one like ends in like beginning of June. Yeah, but I, I, also I, don't... I think you honestly even start in August. I think you keep you June, can. July off and you start in August. Let me just also think about though, I don't really think time is our problem. Like, I don't think these months are a real issue. Maybe summer months are because people want to go outside, but I don't, I don't really think that's what's killing us. I agree. Now, maybe a switch could help, but you think the rest of the world's going to do it? No. Like, ultimately, I don't think it matters all that much. I think it would be better for me. I would prefer to not have to worry about League in summer versus, you know, having that dead period in November, December. But at the same time, it's like, I do also enjoy that time because you have the holidays for us. And you get yeah. that time off with family that you wouldn't normally get elsewhere where you're cramming everything else in and you're worrying about life uh, during that stretch. And it's like, nah, like, I'm not gonna lie. It's like, especially from a content creation point of view and talking to those that work in the esports scene as well. Like, it is very nice to have that November to December period off. And not yeah. have to worry about tournaments and Christmas and tournaments and Thanksgiving stuff like that. Like it, it legitimately is nice. Yeah, because I, do li I do like the outside the box thinking con. To be clear, I'm just saying I prefer. It. Yeah, I like it too. I just, I'm a big fan of having it in the summer because nothing else is on in the summer, other than baseball. Yep. But I get like people are saying, oh, it's just not normal sports time of year. But that's really just an American standard, like. I can't think other countries have a lot of competitions going on all the time anyways. We're a big country that's just like, eh, right, we don't do anything during the summer. <laughs> other than baseball, who's the only contrarian. <laughs> yep. And but that's also baseball's because, like, dying uh, anyways. But baseball's also a good sport that, like, you don't have to take fully serious those games in the middle yep. of summer. You can ignore them for the most part. If you're a diehard, then yeah, you're following every game. But if you're a casual, you're able to tune out for that stretch and not really worry about it all that much. It's the advantage that that sport technically actually has. And you have the all-star break in the middle, which is like a fun reprieve of of time that you can just relax and hang out. But like, And I, I mean, that's kind of the same way for League. Summer split for LCS, at least. Because we're the ones who seem to have the biggest drop-off. We're definitely a region where eight teams get in. <laughs> so, do these games truly matter that much? Like, like to the average viewer, you know what I mean? That's more what I'm yeah. meaning. Like, I, I highly doubt the average viewer is sitting there like, Oh man, I wonder if like Cloud and, or I wonder if FlyQuest and the 100 Thieves are going to be able to figure it out and get past the absolute titans of dig and like psh, immortals before the end of the year like can they put it together i don't think there's more than probably twenty thousand people who truly are sitting there worrying i would say actively worrying that fly quests and 100 thieves are going to be able to get past dig and immortals by the end of the year yeah like a lot of us are like yeah they're gonna get they're, they're gonna more than likely be past them now the last two weeks of lcs if it's still a thing maybe we can all start worrying together but until then i will say, i don't think it really matters i will say this a lot of people shit on the 18 playoff uh decision i think it's good i personally like it but yeah. i'm also biased coming from call of duty where qualifying for the majors literally everybody goes your regular season doesn't disqualify anybody it just purely determines seating but there's still the point is that we are call of duty fans are conditioned to just enjoy watching competitive call of duty 
and enjoy the ebb and flow and make fun of the teams at the bottom and lift up the teams that are at the top that like we enjoy seeing that and then every team luna every team gets a chance to show themselves on stage in front of fans around the world or around the united states like yeah. that's a big positive that like i if the lcs had all the like if the lcs traveled for playoffs and like every team got a chance to play in front of people beyond just la then life is great oh it'd be fantastic and i don't think the a team is bad that's what i was meaning it by it was more just meaning i can see why casual people are watching midsummer you know what no, i, I mean know. yeah no I know. like i'm watching but that's because i like league of legends but I can see why the average person isn't, and I don't think it's a huge deal. I mean, granted, now it's a huge deal because viewership's down, but let's be real, viewership's also down because, like, two legacy teams just announced they're leaving. One actually did, and one said they are. I want to see if, really quick before we go, I want to see if any, uh, if any of the games today made it into the most watched games of the split. I doubt they did. But I just want to check to see if you... I also it. did not realize how personally people take it that are like TSM fans. I didn't think that drop-off would be significant at all. TSM's leaving. But I actually read like there are people who only watch tsm games now on like vod vod channels because they don't want to watch the actual broadcast one, isn't that kind of wild what it is one match made it into the top five matches this week c9 fly that would make sense TSM TL? versus immortals no way i'm dead ass <laughs> i'll share it right now as long as you're dead <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, you, that just made me laugh. <laughs> Where'd you share it? I'm showing it on stream. Do you like my hair bun? They're not looking at yes. me. I'm not sharing my screen right now. Well, share your screen. Where is it? Check out my hair bun. Oh, you're showing it on stream. My stream's yeah. behind. I look fabulous. Why is my stream yep, behind? fabulous. What? I said, yes, it looks fabulous. Yeah, so uh, the most watched match still is TL 100 Thieves. It's the only match that's broke six figures. But nah, today... C9 FlyQuest is right there. Week two, day one. Oh, I'm dumb. I missed all yeah. that. My bad. Yeah, Scroll so down, though. I'm trying to see this. I can't. There's nothing else. Uh, everything else you have to pay for premium no i meant the fifth game what's the fourth and the fifth game the fourth and the fifth game uh fourth is 100 thieves nrg from last week and then fifth game is tsm immortals Ooh, that's tough so that's actually really good uh that's interesting to know so three of the matches this week almost hit six figures yeah. That's a massive bounce back from last week. I mean, I think it's going to be interesting how the LCS takes it, but uh, there's a very real world that TL's probably going to be the biggest team, fan base wise, going forward. Like, I mean, potentially. After TSM leaves, because I think TL's going to. Cloud9, obviously. Well, Cloud9's under TL right now. Uh, yeah, but that's I know they're with the hundred thieves. That's, so. that's not because of TL though. It's because of hundred thieves, in my opinion. Maybe TL RNG NRG is the second game, bro, or third game, and NRG does not have a big fan base in LCS. True. It's just <laughs> it's tough because TL's like I don't know. We'll see. I'm I'm gonna wait to see. Tomorrow will be a big one. TL EG should be the most watched game of the split. So far. And that's... Uh, Which one? Or, sorry, no, that's Friday, I think. TL versus Which... EG. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, like... I didn't think the drop-off would be this hard. I think it's a real indicator. I mean, 
TSM versus Immortals being that I watched is probably a real indication that LCS should have maybe allowed the FTX sponsorship. Nah, I don't know. Not I mean, breaking look, the. Looking at this now, though, like this is an indicator to me that today just today rebounded relative to others because you have three games from today on. No, it right? did. I just meant they like they probably shouldn't have. They probably should have made more of an effort to keep their top teams. Oh, or okay. legacy teams like the LCS. I know they're not. There's nothing they can do. Like CLG was going to move on, but I'm surprised. I don't know. We'll see how their future goes. It I'm should be fine. I guess I'm surprised that Hundred Thieves EG didn't make it on this list when that matchup was. I don't know. Somewhat hyped. Does EG pull that many viewers? I guess not. But I thought Hundred Thieves did, given. Two uh, like two of their matches are already on here. I mean, we'll see. I'll check in the morning to see if that updates. But at least for now, that I mean, the sixty-five k average is still a little bit worrying. But we'll see as time goes on. The average yep, viewer, just here. the average viewership, whenever I pulled or whenever I had it yesterday or prior to this past week, actually, this will be a good check because I have all the data saved. Uh, where's viewership? Uh, the average prior to today was sixty-seven point nine one zero. The average viewer dropped today, despite the peaks being up. Huh. Well, I guarantee you, a lot of people watching that. C9 FlyQuest game, we're watching to see if the... <laughs> we see were watching to see the explosion. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised C9 doesn't pull that many. Yeah. Also interesting to note that TL uh, NRG was the fourth game of the day, not... Uh... Or was it the fourth or was it the second? No. The fourth game of the day was... Hold on, I'm about to sneeze. Oh, the fifth sneeze. game was TSM. Or the fourth game was TSM Memorials. Okay. Or fourth, yeah, my bad. Well, it's interesting that that's technically validating the whole EU viewers getting the view earlier. Technically mattered somewhat, but we'll see if that continues as the split goes on. That's kind of crazy, though. The, like, looking at this, the C9 only has one game in here. I feel like they're bigger than that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. And Let's the see. energy poll is kind of wild, no? Energy's up here twice. Yeah. I don't think it's because of energy. <laughs> Maybe it's know. old. <laughs> Maybe it is energy, fans. I don't know. But I do need to wrap this up because I need to export this because it's done. And Emily's not feeling the best, so I don't want to force her to be on camera for too long. So, okay. Uh, stream. What? Yep. So, stream. We will catch you later. Uh, I will let everybody know whether we're going to do YouTube or Twitch uh, going forward. I'm curious to see what these numbers ultimately look like uh, and kind of go from there. It seems like the average viewership is mostly the same between both platforms for me which is interesting to note. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll catch you on the next one. Hope Paul doesn't enjoy this feeling of being ahead of 100 Thieves for long because I don't think it'll last for him. But, you know, <laughs> that's life. Do we play soon? Uh, next week. Not really, I guess. Anyway. I guess I'll hold it for a while because y'all are playing 100 or Cloud9 tomorrow and we play Energy, so true i'll at least put another game between us maybe we'll see you might lose who knows all right stream we'll <laughs> catch you later